We are back. It's First Look Program. It's News Talk 1180 and the new 96.1 KERN. We're streaming live on the Internet at Bakersfield.com. I'll be totally honest with you. This is probably the most anticipated segment of the program we've had in months. I have never gotten so many text messages and emails and phone calls uh, about the what's happening at the end of this segment than I have of any segment of the show in the 20 people want grapes. In the 16 years I've been doing this. Yeah, my wife's whole office. You better get some cut candy grapes. Or what? What are you going to do? I got People are threatening me. It started off, they were all nice about it. Now it's gotten kind of ugly. Uh, we're joined by the great Richard Bean, frankly. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How you doing? I'm awesome. Hey, this is a, you know, when we announced Friday, I think, I sent out a message, and I said on, or yesterday, was it yesterday? Whenever. And I said, Jack Pandel, the owner of the grapery, one of our, Delano-based, I guess, uh, farming operations, which invented the cotton candy grape, among many other things, was going to be on the, the program. I was inundated with messages and calls like, me too. please save me some. Right? Good. If, he, if he brings witch finger grapes or the cotton candy, I want to try them. People throughout the newsroom. What's a witch finger? Oh, we're going to show you. Welcome to the program, Jack Pandel. Thanks, Richard. Good to be yeah. here. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, tell us a little bit about your company and how long has this been around? Your third generation? Yeah, third generation. My grandfather started uh, Pandel Brothers uh, in Delano back in the 40s. He was an immigrant at the turn of the century, but got stuck. From where? Croatia. Croatia. Yeah, modern day Croatia, guys, the yeah. island of Hvar, H V A R. It's right. a very nice tourist island if anybody right. wants to visit. It's a beautiful place. Anyway, uh, and then uh, my dad and two uncles continued the business uh, in the 40s through the, like, 90s. Uh, and I was involved in that business for all those years. And then uh, took a short stint working for Governor Wilson in the mid-90s. And then uh, started Grapery in about 1996, uh, growing just the traditional grape varieties, um, like for, ta- for table grapes? Yeah, all table grapes, okay. all fresh grapes. No wine grapes? No no, no just, wine or yeah. raisin or anything. It grew other crops, but, um, but the focus, of course, was grapes. And then in, uh, the interest, it got really interesting. In 2000, formed a partnership with the Stoller family, which, who owns Sunridge Nurseries. Terry Stoller? Terry and Glenn Stoller. Okay. Right. right. And right. we formed a company called International Fruit Genetics, uh, and we hired world-famous great breeder Dr. David Kane uh, to be our geneticist and started breeding new varieties. And that's really where a lot of the varieties well, that you have in front of you Wait a minute, you're making from. those evil GMOs. No, no GMOs. These aren't All genetically modified organisms? Absolutely not. Traditional breeding, just like Friar Mendelssohn, way back when he did the peas. Spli- Same old splice, idea. just splicing. Not splicing, just Breeding, just like you breed horses okay, or tell, dogs okay. well, or cats or How do you else. breed a grape? Yeah. Well, you take pollen from one variety and uh, apply it to the female part of the grape flower of another variety. So that's the male is the pollen, and the ovary is the female part of the no grape. No right? idea. I yeah. thought literally you snip the thing off that's and, what you I put thought. It, and you tape it on there. and you. No, s- no grape, a grape fl- every ba- berry started as a grape flower. It has a, an ovary, and it has pollen sacs. It doesn't have petals like a traditional flower. Are you saying, are there male and female grapes? No, no, it's a complete flower. It has both the male and the female. Wow. Right, which is what most flowers are. It's an LGBT are. grape, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we dust the pollen, or the male part of one variety, onto the female part of another variety. And um, the, what gets a little interesting is we're, of course, breeding seedless varieties, right? So... When you cross seedless by seedless, you don't get a seed, but we get an embryo. Uh, and the embryo is tiny, tiny, micro, almost microscopic. And we, we uh, cut them out of the grape berries under a microscope on sterile conditions and plant, literally plant, the embryo in a test tube and grow them out in test tubes. It's like tissue culture. That, that is, you this might is have incredible. Done in, I've never right, heard yeah. of anything like this. Yeah. So we'll have a room full of little test tubes with little grapevines growing in them. And then those eventually get planted into the greenhouse and then from the greenhouse out into a field where we start to evaluate them for the fruit, the growing characteristics, all and, the things And where does all for. this take place? Our, our lab and test fields are located east of Delano. 
Okay, and the Stoller family are their partners in this. Yeah, and the Stollers are a partner in International Fruit okay, Genetics. This, this yeah. was was this being done before? I mean, is this common? Well, I wouldn't say it's common, but there are other breeding programs, both in the United States and internationally. Yeah. All right. So, what was the first new breed that you? Well, and interesting, the, the first one we commercialized, we ended up naming Sweet Surrender. So, um, and it was, it tasted like regular grapes, only really, really good. I mean, it had plum-like flavors, it was really rich. And uh, my wife knew Kim Fiorini, who is the owner and proprietor of uh, Sweet Surrender, mm -hmm. a world, nationally famous mm -hmm. bakery here in Bakersfield, and just kind of mentioned the coincidence of the name of her shop and the name of our variety. And so Kim, being the entrepreneur that she is, said, well, I'd like to put some of those in the shop. It might be fun. And that started a great relationship, um, selling grapes, grapes in a high-end bakery, which is, I mean, it's good as they it's get, one, right? One-stop shopping. Um, just to give you an example of how successful we've become, we're going to talk about the cotton candy grape. The average grocery store in the United States sells, say, nine boxes, which is a 20-pound box of grapes per store per day. Kim, with cotton candy, was averaging 30 boxes wow. and peaked at 50 against cupcakes and cookies and the best you can make. So that just shows you that when you give consumers something that's really good in fruit, they love it. And, and we have thousands of emails and Facebooks and Twitters and yada from customers all over the country who attest to that, that, you know, my kids won't eat fruit, but wow, they yeah. got your grapes and we're hooked now. This is fantastic. how do you and I, I don't this I, not to backtrack on the science of this too much, but if you would decide like cotton candy, does that happen accidentally? Right. Is can it? you could you go into the lab and say make me a maple syrup grape? Where do you begin <laughs> fabricating these things from from the from literally square one? Well, the flavor it's a little bit like mixing spices in a pot and that you've, you know, you've never put together before, so you're not quite sure what you're going to get. The source of these unique flavors mostly comes from the eastern United States. So most people would be familiar with like a Concord grape, mm -hmm. which is your Welch's grape juice kind of taste. And those are grown for juice, but they're very soft and mushy, and they're seeded, and they would never make it as a fresh table grape. But they have a really unique flavor. Well, in addition, there are a lot of uh, varieties in the Eastern U.S., both north, Northeast and Southeast, with unique fruity flavors. Things like scuppernongs and muscadines and uh, rotundifolias, for example. And our breeder, Dr. Kane, working together with a breeding program at the University of Arkansas, the Razorbacks, uh, which were, were breeding some of these Eastern varieties, he put those together with our Western varieties, which are also commonly known as European grapes. And so that's all of your commonly known table grapes, your common wine grapes. They're all in the same genus and species. We put those together, and that's where the unique flavors came from. Now, were we planning on a cotton candy flavor or something? No. In fact, we didn't recognize the flavor at first. We knew it was good. That's familiar. What does that taste what like? What is that? And and it's interesting. This is one of those rare varieties that in the field, it almost has a caramely flavor when it's you know out in the warm temperatures. But the day after you harvest it and you've cooled it down, that's when the cotton candy flavor really mm. comes out. I, la I laugh. I say you need to age them a day. You know, <laughs> and then the, and, and they are better served cold, whereas a lot of grapes are better served at warm temper at uh, room temperature. We've so. learned a lot about grapes today. Do you it, it, do you have like wineries just beating down your door wanting to talk to you about this technology? No, and we have tried to make uh, wine and raisins with the cotton candy grape, for example, but the flavor is very volatile. So any kind of heat that's applied to it, which would happen in winemaking sure. or raisin making, the, the flavor just Well, you, just, you hear about gone. geography and weather conditions and climate, all of that that comes into play with wine grapes. Sure. It seems to me you guys might be able to find a shortcut to the perfect wine grape. Yeah, that's not our focus. Our all focus right. is fresh grapes. Um, but we do know that... Uh, you know, I like to say there's the four pillars, and the first pillar is genetics. You know, you have to find a variety that has the genetic capability of either a great flavor or a unique flavor. And the second thing is how you grow it. That includes where you grow it, the soil, 
but then how you manage the, the growth. It's, it's how you feed it, the, the amount of light that the fruit gets. A lot of things go into, you know, it's the difference between that $100 bottle of Cabernet and that, you know, $2 you know, two dot, uh, two buck chuck. Mm-hmm. You know, two dollar bottle of wine. Th- they're both Cabernet, but there's obviously a difference. And al- most of that actually happens in the field. It's how you grow it. Same thing with our grapes. We are very focused on growing the fruit for flavor, as well as the things we need as grower. I mean, we need yield. We need cost control and those kind of things. Um, and then, and then we harvest for flavor. So the typical table grape grower might make two harvest passes through the field. We'll make four to five. We're just taking off that very peak mm. of maturity because that's when the flavor comes out. It comes out toward the end. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just sweet. But when you add sweet plus flavor at the very end, then it's it's a wow We've experience. learned a lot about grape steak. we got to take a break. Let's uh, do that and come back and eat grapes. I think Jack Pandel should be on the program every day. <laughs> I'm going to vote for that right now. Just come on by with all your grapes and... Uh, We'll put them to work for you. He, he's got 13 varieties, so if we could go one variety a week, we could we could get them for 13 <laughs> weeks and just talk about each different variety. Yeah, let's right? get it uh, get it booked. I, these are what, these are the sweet surrender grapes. No, that's oh. that's an experimental variety. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Yeah, it's not on the market. We're well, get them go, get it going. It. Right. Yes, sir. We're talking to Jack Panel, the owner of the Grapery, who has uh, gifted us and brought in. Two, four, six different types of grapes. Jack, t- tell, can you go through each one and tell us uh, what we're looking at? We have the Flavor Promise, which is already on the market, correct? Yeah, Flavor Promise is a red seedless, which uh, we're going to start harvesting in about another week. It tastes like a grape should taste, only really, really good. It's very crunchy, very juicy. I can attest to that. Um, yeah, and the Flavor Promise is... And, and we write it on every package, uh, every consumer pack, is our promise to the consumer that they're gonna, it's going to be the best grape that they've ever, ever eaten. And it has my signature and a personal email address. And we get, uh, I think we're in excess of 10,000 emails now, not to count all the Facebook and Twitter and so on. I mean, Twitters are hitting every few minutes. It's amazing. Oh, I bet. The, the traffic. What's the hashtag? Grapery? Uh, Grapery grapes. Grapery grapes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, it, and then the next one uh, is an experimental variety. Uh, it's a it's a green elongated grape. It's about one and a half to two inches long. Again, a standard grape flavor, just really good, good texture. Uh, we haven't commercialized it yet. The witch uh, finger is not. Well, the green witch finger okay. is not commercial. All yeah, right. so we're we're putting it through its paces to make sure that it meets all the criteria that uh, we have to, and that includes a lot of consumer testing. We want to know where what do you do that. Going. We do it with our staff. Uh, we also go down to L.A. Uh, we have a good relationship with Gelson's, and so we'll mm-hmm. set up in their stores and you know work with mm-hmm. consumers there. We go to trade shows, different things like mm-hmm. that. Okay. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. And what do we have here? Well, Cotton then the candy. next one is our. It's the it's the cult food. The cult food. <laughs> Cotton candy is just taking the produce world by storm. I mean, retailers tell us they've never seen anything like it. It is a literally tastes like cotton candy when you bite into it. It reminds you of going to the county fair. We didn't plan that taste. Uh, we didn't even recognize it at first. I was telling the guys on the break. But it, uh, it definitely does. And it's in the stores. We're at the peak of harvest right now. And you can find it locally at uh, Sweet Surrender, at, at Sprouts, at Hagen's, uh, at, at, uh, and at Sully's, and at Sam's. I think I got everybody. To make Sam's? Sure. Yeah, Sam's Club. Sam's Club. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. Uh-huh. Right. And then the next one is uh, we're starting to roll out in a big way now. We call it Moon Drops. Um, it is a elongated, uh, again, almost two inches long, thick, uh, black grape with a absolutely wonderful flavor. It's not a unique flavor, but it's just very rich and juicy. Uh, we're planting a lot of this variety now. We're going uh, major commercial with it. And so, though it's fairly tight supply still this year, in the next two to three years, it'll be much easier to find. So, we're really excited about Moon Drops. The next variety is uh, a numbered variety. Um, uh, this is the one that Scott just mm-hmm. told me he likes better than cotton candy. Yeah, uh, it's a it's not a very big. It's a small grape. It's red. Scott, what does it taste like to you? It's 
It's like if you drive a regular car somewhere and get out of it and get into a Ferrari and drive that around. It's still a car, but it's a million times better. It tastes like a grape, but all, it's, the, it's just bursting with flavor. It's so vivid. It's just I can't go back to regular grapes now, ever. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the thing with the unique varieties. It's very hard to describe, but this has those Eastern flavors. It has a little bit of a Concord and maybe a Scuppernong background in it, a little remember, Muscat. Remember when you had regular TV and the first time you saw HDTV? That's what <laughs> tasting that, I'm not joking, that's what that grape is like. It's just so much more alive. And think about it, if you love cotton candy and think it's fantastic, there are you know, this variety, which we haven't made a decision to go commercial on, but we're leaning that way. And we have several others in the pipeline that we're going to be releasing soon that are, you know, uh, those high flavor profiles. So it's really exciting what we're going to be able to do with the grape category. Anyway, and then the last one in the lineup is the uh, Witch Finger, which is a very skinny, some people call it the chili pepper grape. It's very long and tapered at the end. Uh, again, a standard flavor, but just really sweet and good and the unique shape. Uh, we, we get tons of pictures from folks of their kids, you know, making fangs yeah, out of them or right. sticking them out of their ears. Or And this so was on. in, this was, because when I first saw them, I thought it was like one of those accidental things where you were experimenting with grapes and these things grew that shape and you're like, uh-oh. But they right. taste. But that was actually something you guys sought out when you were breeding yes. these grapes. Yeah, and in the, in the Middle East, there are varieties with that elongated shape, and so our breeder got a hold of some of those huh. to work with. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, grapes are grown all over the world. I mean, it's uh, every climate. You know, you name it. And so, w- what is your? Uh, you got how, about ten, many, You got about ten seconds. Okay. We well, can put, you? St- you were gonna. You were gonna leave here, but can, can you stick around for another segment? Uh, whatever. Yes. Okay, great. Because I, I have a lot of questions for you about how do you market these things? Why Delano is such a good place to grow them? Okay. Uh, are we getting to grape clutter? I mean, how many varieties can you have? Can a store have in there? All because, right, we got to take a break. We'll right, be right back. About. First look, News Talk eleven eighty, the new ninety six one K here and streaming live on. We are back. It's first look program. It's News Talk eleven eighty, the new ninety six one K here and streaming live on the internet at Bakersfield dot com. I, w- I honestly. I don't want to sound like a decent person or selfless or anything like that because I'm the furthest thing from that. But I wish everybody could try all of these, and I I, I wish everybody could be here to experience. This is uh this is unbelievable. Uh, I I didn't know all this was in the world, and now I do. And it's, but it's, I can't just go back to regular grapes now. So thanks a lot, Jack. <laughs> uh, my wife brings home the one she gets at whatever. I'm just. Take them away. I care not for your inferior grape product. It's nine thirty-five in the AM. Hop, you got any traffic or weather to do? I want some more grapes. I'm, I'm sure you. I could, would you? <laughs> um, want... No, we're uh, we're caught up with traffic and weather. Uh, stocks are way up. Uh, traffic's moving along splendidly, and the weather's going to be a little bit warm. So that's uh, pretty much what our news desk looks like. But I'm I'm happy to th- about the fact that I uh, I do shop at Hagen's, and uh, so I can get these. I do shop at Sam's Club, so I can get these. Boom. And uh, and the uh, the the flavor promise. Uh, fulfilled every promise it ever made to me. Aww. So that's uh, that's uh, that's that's the I, mission accomplished. Uh, Mr. Pandol, may I have that bag of flavor promise <laughs> grapes, please? Yes, you may. Yay! <laughs> you thought he was. Uh, in case you thought he was kidding, I can no, assure you. <laughs> You're welcome. You rock, yay. Take it. I made your day. <laughs> yeah, we're talking. Uh, nope. <laughs> okay, so some of the grapes just went missing. We're talking to Jack Pandel, the owner of the grapery, who has, if you haven't had these different varieties of grapes, Witch Fingers, Cotton Candy, Flavor Promise, they are really spectacular. Oh, it's awesome. Plus, Jack's signature and his email is on every bag. That's quite a commitment. Yes, sir. Now, wh- wh- why is it that... Um, well, let's let's talk a bit a little bit about Delano. What is it about our soil or our climate that makes it such a good place for grapes? Yeah, we grow from south of Bakersfield up to about the Porterville area, but table grapes are grown as far north as about Fresno, mm-hmm. and most of them are on the east side of the valley, mm-hmm. not very much on the on the west side. And it's just a great combination of of soil, uh, water, uh, weather, uh, grapes as opposed. Table grapes, as opposed to wine grapes, need warm days and warm nights, whereas your wine grapes are more concentrated in the coastal regions where you get the cooler oh, okay. nights and right. that type of thing. 
Uh, but it's a pretty small area. So like, you know, you can grow them in the desert. So grapes are grown in Coachella and in the Sonora uh, Desert of Mexico. They don't do real well in tropical climates or in really wet, humid climates. Um, they okay. like dry. All right. So, well, and you were telling me on the break how you market these things. You actually license out the, the growing to other farms, right? In how many countries? Yeah, we're in 11 countries worldwide now with licenses. That's amazing. And so if, if I'm in Turkey, you mentioned Turkey is one of yeah. them, and I've licensed your cotton candy, would it be sold under cotton candy? Or would they use their, their own name for it? Yeah, we, yes. We don't actually license cotton candy in Turkey, so it's okay. a very limited amount. But let's say in Spain. I was in Spain a uh, week before last, and we have a grower there who's very successfully growing cotton candy. It's going mostly into the uh, U.K., English you know, market, and it's sold as cotton candy. Mm. The little bit of a rub there is if you're an Englishman, you call it candy floss, not cotton oh, candy. So okay. that's right. a little bit of cultural... Right. In the naming that right. we always have to be aware of. Right, right. What is, what is your best-selling uh, variety right now? You know, they all sell really well. I mean, it's interesting how uh, a grape like the Flavor Promise, which tastes like a regular grape does, only really, really good. We leave it on the vine a long time, let it express its full flavor. People love it and prefer it. Uh, cotton candy has become almost a cult food. People go nuts over it um, and love it too. So it really depends on what you're, what you like, and mm -hmm. and we want to provide a variety of varieties or you know grape styles so that we can meet whatever you like. Well, I mean, do you have how hard is it? Uh, you're in Sam's Club. Uh, you're in Hagen's, right? right? Is it hard to get shelf space in a, uh, a mainstream s supermarket where, I, I guess, people of a certain age, including me, you grew up with, with green grapes and red grapes, and then came the, the, the seedless grapes. But this is a whole lot of different product here. So how do you break into the, the big chains to say, give me more shelf space because I have, instead of two, I have six? Yeah. You know, at first, when we took... Uh, our earlier varieties that were just really high flavor, um, it, retailers, you tell them you've got this grape that is absolutely wonderful, and they don't really believe you. Mm -hmm. But we found a small, the first one was a small little retailer down in Southern California called AJ's, and they took a chance. Mm -hmm. And they were selling uh, two boxes of black grapes a day in their stores on the average. They only had like 20, 25 stores. And... Um, it, and that's uh, and and this grape that we offered was a black grape. Mm -hmm. It was called it was the Sweet Surrender. In two weeks, they were selling fourteen boxes. Oh my goodness! So yeah. it opened their eyes, <laughs> and then we used that story to go to other retailers. It was usually about a three-year process to convince the retailer that that consumers really cared about flavor. Uh, retailers weren't always tuned to that, unfortunately. You know, when, when retailers would buy from us, they said, well, how big are your grapes? What color are your grapes? You know, are they dark red or light red? Is the green green or is the green a little bit, you know, amber? Mm -hmm. I mean, they were worried about things like that. And the interesting thing is in those thousands and thousands of emails and Facebook comments and Twitters and so on, not one consumer has ever asked me about the size of our grapes, the color of our grapes, mm. but they always comment about the flavor and the texture, the crunchiness. They like that. Yeah. You know, and that'll steer somebody to a store. I Look, uh, Raisin Bran is Raisin Bran no matter what store you get it in. So I'm going to go to the store where I can get this because yeah, right. everything else is equal. Something like this, this is a reason to go to a particular store. Yes, it is. Yeah, our... Our experience is, is that the smaller, high-end, regional-type retailers generally are more open to something new and innovative, mm -hmm. and the, the national big-box store chains are a little bit slower to adopt right. those things. But now they're knocking on our door also, except we just don't have the volume to supply them. So we're sticking with the yeah, that, that smaller was, that regional was, Yeah, right, right. I was wondering how more, what kind yeah. of volume you're producing. It seems to me... Any of these varieties would be perfect in an airport or in the airport, the stuff you buy online, because you want to eat something light that's crunchy, that leaves you with a good aftertaste. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you guys in the airports at all? No, yeah. no, not yet. 
You know, get the snack box on United for nine dollars. He spends you know, a lot four of grapes in it. Bean spends a lot of time in airports. I do way too much time, and this would be perfect. And a lot of the wine bars in the idea. airports now. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, these would be like a huge hit. Great idea. No, I won't, I'm not going to charge you for that, Jack. You know? <laughs> You're more market, new market. Hey, have you guys been affected by the drought? Absolutely, yeah. It's it's been difficult. Fortunately, we have enough wells that are getting us by, but we've had to put in new ones and go deeper and. It's pretty serious. What is the, uh, uh, how much water do grapes consume as opposed to, say, other crops? You know? uh, it's probably average to below average consumer of water. Okay. Say, All compared right. to a tree, uh, a citrus tree or an almond tree would almond use tree, more. Right. Row crop, um, a double cropped row crop would use more. Alfalfa would use more. Okay. So we're kind of on the lower end. Okay. And it, did you, you, you said Sam's Club. Yeah. You're not in Walmart, though. No, we're not in Walmart. Is that a different buy with these with those guys? Yeah, Walmart's a very different demographic than a typical um, Walmart store. Okay, all right. Yeah. If this will help balance out your drought situation, if you can get me one bag of these every week, I'll <laughs> never, wa- I'll never water my lawn again. It can just, I'll never wash my cars. Take I a will- shower. No, I don't do that. I don't really do that now. <laughs> That's why I sit here and you sit there, Jack. Yeah. I mean, I'll make that deal right now. Right. So what's next? What's it, what else is in the pipeline? What are you guys working on? Well, as I mentioned, Moon Drops, the, the long black uh, grape, we're making a big play on, so we're putting a lot of acres in, and that'll be hitting the stores in much greater volume over the next few years. Uh, we have an, another variety, very similar to this red one that uh, Scott likes so much, uh, that we're going to call gumdrops. We now have a commercial planning of it. It's not very big, um, but we'll be ramping it up over the next few years, too. It's, it's a long process. You know, it takes from breeding to commercial probably at least 10 years. Really? And then to ramp up the commercial, it's very capital intensive. It takes a lot of money to buy land and plant the vines. It takes three years for the vines to come into production. So we have to ask our consumers to be patient because it just takes right. time to get all of this done. Right. And again, how uh, we we're talking on the break, how do you get exposure? You said you had sometimes you'll have growers or like actually come come to yeah. Delano or Bakersfield and, and, and they will taste your different things or you'll you'll tour them around. How do you, how do you market this stuff? How do you get the word out? You know, at first we went around and knocked on doors of growers all over the world, but now they're really, you know, our reputation is there, and mm-hmm. mostly people are coming to us. I mentioned to you in the break we had 150 people this uh, last week that we hosted from all over the world looking at our varieties, as well as other local breeding programs varieties. Well, what kind of countries were they from? Yeah. All of those that I mentioned uh, on the break. That have know, the climate Europe, to be able to grow it. Yeah, yeah. from right. Europe, South America, Mexico, Australia, South Africa, uh, Middle East, you know, all that of That is those. incredible. Yeah. And to think that my daughter was with Jack's daughter <laughs> on a AYSO <laughs> club team. I think it was, I moved here in 94. It was called the Grapery. Yeah. So we had the best snacks of any <laughs> oh, team I can in the league. I don't even play soccer. I want to be on that team. <laughs> it was terrific. This seems like it's close to a self-marketing item. If you go into somebody who is the buyer for a chain of uh, grocery stores, just pop one of these in their mouth, boom, duh, and then just yeah. go home because they're going to call you. It's yeah. it, it just seems like the most open and shut case there could ever be in what to carry at your store, if it's, anybody. Is it uh, – what is the, is the, are they more expensive than regular grapes by a huge margin? Or because it can't be, it's got to be pretty close, right? Uh, no, it's we we charge pretty good price. It's, yeah. it's expensive. We put a lot of money into the breeding. Sure, and, and uh, you get what you pay for. And having to capitalize it, and and we look at it as a value proposition that uh, you're going to take these home and eat every one of them. Yep, and you're going to love them. Yeah, because yeah. I would tell my wife get these at the store, and I would not ask how much Isn't they. Is that I don't, true about I don't grapes? Care. There is no waste in grapes. Seriously, you think about when you buy grapes, you don't throw grapes away. No, hop eats you the eat stems. them all. Hop eats yeah. the stems. <laughs> Jack Pandel, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Good Thank luck. You, uh, we we, we want to have you back. I mean, you, you, this is the most. There's Herb Benham. He'll be in here for some free grapes. Hey, he, <laughs> put, he put a shirt on. <laughs> thanks, Herb. <laughs> but seriously, thank you. And uh, will you come back? Absolutely. Tell us about what Love else you. you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hop, thanks you want to say me. thank you for the for the. <laughs> like you a memorial. Thank you. What do you say to Mr. Pandel? Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. He was very gracious. Absolutely. <laughs> That's uh, it's, been, it's been an eye-opening and educational, and mostly. Has anybody ever given you any input on how much grapes one should eat at a sitting? 
before they have to worry at all? Because as I've eaten much a, as you can. Okay, because I've eaten a lot of them, and there's no signs of slowing just yet. They are known to absolutely improve your health every time. I'm playing tennis at noon. It is I'll a health report, I'll report back it's on how that Okay, goes. get them in the airports, I'm telling you. That's right. Get them in the airports. We got it right next to the Sharper Image kiosk. We'll be right back and finish this thing up for the day. It's First Look Program. It's News Talk 1180 and the new 96.1 KERN. We're streaming live on the internet at bakersfield.com.